Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Who is as the wise man? All right. Good question. And who knoweth the interpretations of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Confident. To shine, Exodus 34, 28, Acts 6, 11. It's the brighten. It's a, it's, a, it's a happy countenance. The wise man. 1 Corinthians 5, 18. It's knowing something. Getting to know something. It brings a smile on your face. Brings joy. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment. Well, that's interesting. You're to obey the rules and, and laws of a man human king. First Kings two thirty six to forty two. And that in the regard of the oath of God, the oath of God, Psalms eighty nine thirty five. You find this in first Peter two thirteen and verse seventeen. Listen, unless the decree of the man violates God and the word, you are to obey. Now, where it, where it goes against and defies the word of God, then you don't listen. Peter says we ought to obey God more than man. Well, you know what? It comes with a price. They were whipped. For your stand for the word of God against man, you may have to suffer, and I mean pain, or privileges. But God will reward you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now, driving 55 miles per hour, paying your taxes, not parking where it says no parking, you know, nothing in violation of the word of God. But if they come and tell you you can't witness, you can't preach the gospel, you're going to have to stand with God. You're going to have to stand with the Bible. You're going to have to take the punishment. But other than that, the laws and regulations in this country so far are really not against the Bible. For the common uh, citizen. Can't pray in school? Yes, you can. I'll show you how you pray in school. I just pray. All right, now you can't physically bring a Bible into school. Well, you're going to have to take the punishment if you do, if you want to. Uh, I would not go to the Christian bookstore and find the biggest Bible I can and slap it down on my desk. Maybe a pocket Bible and the while you're doing your thing in the bathroom, you gotta be smart about it too. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. Who? God. And maybe the king. But God for sure. Stand not in the evil thing. Don't be standing with wickedness. And Revelation says, come out. Be not partakers of her iniquity. Come out of Egypt. Don't keep on going back to Egypt. And he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 and Acts 5.29. Don't stand in the evil. Do what is right. And you do what pleaseth God. Don't, don't do evil and do what pleases the king, and you don't need to worry when a cop parks in front of your house. I have no problems with the death penalty. Because I'm not going to do anything worthy of the death penalty. Where the word of a king is, there is power. 
So what's the only Bible that has a mark of a king? The King James 1611 Bible. In the King James Bible, just celebrated his 400th anniversary, his birthday, four years ago. 404 years. America is, e is not even that old. And she's failing. And she has taken other Bibles that are not signed by a king because we don't want a king to rule over us. Well, by what I've seen in government, I think we are. I think we have, or we got the makings of a king. And nobody's doing anything about it. And who may say unto him, the king, what doest thou? A stream of authority. Now think about King Jesus when he's sitting in Jerusalem. Who do you think is going to walk up to Jesus and think, who do you think you are? I wouldn't dare. No one questions the king. But do you know what modern Bibles do? They question King James. In thousands of ways. I mean, it, it, King James Bible says this. Well, does it really mean that? And then they change it. Imagine what would happen if they would make those changes when King James was still alive. All right, here's the King. Well, here's the Bible, authorized by King James. You imagine the people would start changing all that if he would have found out. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. If you do right. It's going to prevent you from sinning. If you obey just the first commandment, you will never have to worry about sinning again. I'm serious. I mark that statement 100%. If you were to follow and obey every second of your day, the first commandment, you will never have to worry about sinning. Because the first commandment is God first. And if you put God first in your life all the time, you will never sin. Because you wouldn't do the things that displease in him. You wouldn't lie. You wouldn't have false witness. You wouldn't commit adultery. You cheat your parents, right? You wouldn't have idols. You give your body a rest at least once, once a week. You would do everything to please God every second if you kept the first commandment. And you and God would have such a relationship, there would be no sin. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Chapter 8, verse 1. Again, the wise man in his heart. But see, there are times when we tell God it's ourself rather than what you think. It's what I want rather than what you said. It's my feelings over the word of God. And then there's the evil thing. What is an evil thing? Disease, judgment, loss, age, death. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Chapter 6. Did you know for everything that we read in chapter 6 there's a judgment? Did you do the right thing at the right time? You plant seeds just before winter comes. The judgment is you're not going to get a crop. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. Misery. We talked about misery the other night, last night, and trouble. Because of time and judgment, we don't do what is right at the right time. You know what Satan, one of his devices, the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. 
Satan tries to get us to do something before God wants us to do it. Satan tries to get us to do something after when God wants us to do it. He never gets us to try to do something when God wants us to be done. He, he, when he went to Jesus on the mount there, of temptation, everything that Satan gave to him was true. It just wasn't at that moment. Think about that. It wasn't at that time for Jesus to get. Many men in the ministry have set out to do something, to quit something, to go start the work that God, I'm not ready for you to do that yet. Even I have. Men and women have set out to get married when God didn't want them to get married at that point. That's the time in judgment. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. That's time. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him, because we do more wrong. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Behold the evil and the good. For he knoweth not that which shall be. We don't know tomorrow. For who can tell him when it shall be? God will tell us. But in the Old Testament, it is limited revelation. I can tell you about New Jerusalem. Solomon couldn't. I can tell you about hell. Solomon could, but he still didn't understand it. I can tell you about Abraham's bosom. Solomon didn't know about that. I can tell you about the Messiah. Solomon had no idea about the Messiah. If you would have told Solomon that the Messiah would come, walk in his temple, and all the priests and Levites would reject him. There is no man, John 10:18. That has power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Jesus did. But Jesus was no ordinary man. You can get the paddles and bring someone back to life, but God had not designed you to die then. We brought him back to life. Don't take the credit. God gave you a, a continuation of life. Neither has he power, man, in the day of death. You can't say when you're going to die. And you can't say it in your deathbed, well, I'm not going to die. That's foolish. And there is no discard in that war. What's the war? Death. Outside the rapture, the wages of sin is death. You will die if the Lord tarries. And you ain't going to say nothing about it. Do you know what the whole subject of this book is so far? Death. Every man is born to die. And what he, make, what he does from his birth to his death it turns out for the next life, I mean human life, your children, vanity. You can build the biggest and greatest thing. What are you going to do with it when you die? Under the sun. David laid up most of the materials for the temple for Solomon. Did David enjoy the temple that Solomon built? No. David was dead. All David saw was a pile of wood, pile of gold, pile of silver, pile, pile of iron, uh, uh, stones, and, and pile of timber. That's all he saw.
And David couldn't say to God, God, no, you can't kill me till this is done. No. Right, sure. David died. Solomon's going to die. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. So Solomon does know one thing. You die in your sins, you're going to have to give an account. Solomon is saying philosophy with God in the, in the Bible, the word of God. You better not die in your sins. That's what he's saying. But as far as under the sun, death, that's the end. That's it. As far as the earthly matters. And I got to keep stressing that. Because you can't run to this book and, and quote scripture for Christian life. It's, it's not there. This is a man that is observing what happens, life itself. And you know, Solomon would not be driving a Jeep going down the highway with a tire cover that says, life is good. Not by what we've read in eight chapters. And even as a Christian, life is good? No, it's not. The life with Christ is joy, love, peace, long-suffering. Life itself is still hard and bitter and disgusting and, and cruel. What man will take his five-year-old daughter and throw her off a bridge? What group of religion will take and, and shoot a policeman uh, uh, who is begging for his life? Where Christ in me, I want to do what Christ wants me. I'm not going to do that kind of wicked thing. And I've got, listen, I've got health problems and, and other problems, stuff like that. But I still got joy, life, and peace in me. But life itself, you know, when the government gives me bills for taxes and, and utility bills, that's not fair. And that has, the utility bills, pain and suffering has nothing to do with God. Because most of that comes because, what did he say? He says, we don't have the power of death. Whosoever keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. Most of our troubles and problems is because of our own sins. And for the Christian, we do have another thing added. If we serve God and do right, then there will be added persecution. But that's not evil. Persecution by the world for God is not evil. That is to tell you the Bible is true and real and they don't want God. When a family member rejects you because you're serving God, that's a joy, peace, and long-suffering. That's not evil. It's evil for them, not for us. When Christians forsake you because you want to go above and beyond what the Bible says and do what God says and they don't. That, that's not evil. The Bible says that they'll get, get to themselves itchy ears. They'll seek their own and you'll do part of the few that do right. It's a, it's a Bible uh, where they're doing those people who... who are doing those things against us or having us to suffer is proving the Bible right I'm trying to say because God, Jesus already said it would this all this have I seen and plied my heart most the heart unto every work that's done under the sun everything you've done under the sun anybody and everybody there is a time wherein one man ruleth. There's always a ruler somewhere. Over another to his own hurt. To those who, to those you do will hurt the most. And so I saw the wicked buried. 
who had come and gone from the place of the holy, they went to the temple. The wicked. The wicked visited the temple. Not everybody who goes to church is righteous and holy. I saw, all, and so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy. They were forgotten in the city, probably Jerusalem, where they had so done, or the city that they ruled in. This is vanity. Why did they live? They lived to be the ruler that God has pointed them to be. They were wicked, and they went to the temple. They went to church service or whatever it is. And you know what? They died. And they're forgotten. Give me the last name of the Amorite. Who was the last high priest or ruler of the Aztec nation? Who was the name of the last chief of the Cherokee? See? Now, unless you go looking up and digging, you know what I mean? I mean, here you are. Who, who was the last governor that died? In Alaska, unless you live in Alaska, or unless you you're into that kind of thing, who, who's going to know that? Give me the names of, of 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 a governor for each of the fifty states that last died. Come on, tell me the president or the the, the leader of Mexico today. How many people would be able to give his name? I have no idea. So you see, even if they are in rulership, even if they've been world leaders, they'll soon be forgotten. Most of them. Um, we remember George Washington. We remember Alex, Alexander the Great. And, you know, we, there are names like that we do know. How many Americans today can sit down and name every single president from George Washington to President Obama? In order. Okay, take it out of order. Give us at least all the names. Not in order. I'm not talking about terms, just the name. The first and last name. Right. How many could do that? If you're in a college or university or, or a monastery or a, or a cemetery or a seminary, or, who was the name of the person that founded that organization where you are at today? You mean you're going to a school you don't even know who started it? You see what I mean? All right, now verse 11 is very important. Galatians 6, 7, and Romans 13. Because sentence. Now that is what is passed in a law court. You recognize the law courtroom with sentence. You know. Against an evil work. Murder. Theft. Adultery. Uh, stealing. Lying. Embezzlement. You name all the crimes. Is not executed speedily. Some court cases don't get into three, four, five, six years. The Catholic Church has never been put to trial on their works on the Nazi regime of World War II.
the Bush family has not been put on, on trial for those weapons of mass destruction they said that was over there. When they found no weapons of mass destruction. There have been people who've been thrown out of court because of a stupid legal discriminatory. They didn't read the thing. They didn't read his rights in Spanish, whatever. The lack of the sentence of the court. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men, mankind itself, is fully set, fully set in them to do evil. You know why prisons are full? You know why the courtrooms are full? You know why there are more criminals than there are legal law-abiding citizens? Because the courts ain't going to do nothing to me. And if they do, they're going to send me to a place in America where I get free food, free medical, free AC, free heat, free room, free toilet, free water, free security guard. And, oh, yeah, I have to do a little work for a candy bar so I can make cakes out of my candy. And all the great things I do. I even get a free law library. I can get a degree with the books. I can get my education in the prison. I get a free workout center. I don't have to pay $10 a month for the workout center. And if I pop the basketball, I'll just bring it to the guard and he'll get us a new one. What judgment is that? That is not judgment. A man that is in prison today is not judgment. You wait till God gets a hand of them. Either judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, which has not yet happened. So men are going to keep on doing what they're doing because, you know, they're getting away with it. Man, if we were to put a speedy trial on everyone who has been... who. On everyone that's alive today, on January 8, 2015, if we were to put everyone on Capitol Hill before a righteous judge, there would be no Capitol Hill. They'd be all locked up. I sin today because God has not charged my sin, and I think I'm getting away with it. I haven't been judged yet. For all have sinned come to shore of the glory of God. Even I, as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, wash under the blood of Jesus Christ. There are some sins that I am doing because I have not been judged by God yet. Let's get it out let's admit it. And so are you. And when God passes the judgment at the judgment seat of Christ for me, and all has been revealed by ashes or by what's left behind, a gold, silver, or precious stone, I will stop the sinning at that point. I will stop the crime. Or when I die. You know, the, you know the chief theme of this book is? Death. Death stops it all. The day I die, I will never sin again. You ask my wife. You say, does he sin today? I guarantee you she, she'll say yes. He's a sinner. The second after I'm dead, has he sinned yet? The month after I've been dead, has he sinned yet? A year after I've been dead, has he sinned yet? Twenty years after I'm dead, has he sinned? No. Now you see what, what Solomon's saying? It all counts to what you did before you died. All right, you built that big corporation. How would you build it? Did you do it right or did you wrong? And see, you know, I stepped on everybody's toes. I killed a few people to get into this company. And I embezzled some money to get in this company. I shortchanged some people. But, you know, no one stopped me. So I'm going to go keep on going, going, going. How many companies are out there built by blood of murdering people? Of swindling other people of what they expected to get and not? And it's keep on going because, you know what? There's been no judge. You wait to God put steps in. But we're not talking about God. We're not talking about the internal. 
Forget about that for a moment. We're talking about to the day he dies, and he dies, and there's been no judgment against his sins, and that business and all that money keeps going. And someone sees and looks at it and says, well, if he can do it, watch me do it. You know what happens when you send someone into prison as a fool? They come out a smarter criminal. A car thief will hang around with other car thieves to find out how to do it better. Go check the records in the state of Connecticut in New London County about a, a woman who was a bank robber. And find out by the third time when she did get arrested. First time she was just caught stupidly. Second time she did a little better. Third time she kept them on, on, the, on, the, on the chase for a long time. You know why? Because she hanged around with other bank robbers. Don't tell me. Okay. Where are we? Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, God is long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but we're not talking about it. We're talking about a guy who sins, he doesn't get caught, there's no judgment, and he lives over and over. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. That's a colon, but we'll stop at this verse for a moment. Listen, you, you think you're getting away with it? You just better fear God. Remember what Solomon wrote and go back to Proverbs chapter 1 and see what he wrote in that chapter? Go back on your own, please, and then go to this, this lesson, the audio or the video about Proverbs chapter 1. I believe we did that in two or three studies, not four. Colon. But it shall not be well with the wicked. That's a rule. Well, that guy, he did all that wickedness, and he went to the grave, and nothing happened to him. That's what you see under the sun. God killed all those babies. That's what you see under the sun. You wait till you see those babies in glory and you're cast off in, in hell by rejecting the God that let those babies go into heaven. So you think just because the guy got away with it and died, you think that's it. Now, we're not talking about eternal things in this book, but look what he just said. But it shall not be well with the wicked. You mean death is not just death and the grave is not just the grave? Uh, the philosophy? Mr. Solomon? No. Death is not just the death. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Life is short, James 4.14, because he fears not before God. And Solomon is saying 12 and 13, with all life it should be, best thing, fear God. Now, we haven't got to chapter 12 in the last verse, two last verses. Wait till we get there. We'll see Solomon sum it all up. But Solomon stepped out of the, the, the realm of under the sun and gave you the eternal. <coughs> the eternal is fear God. There's a vanity which is done upon the earth. Now see, he brought you back to earth again. He did step out of the realm of earth into the eternity. He had to bring you back. Okay, we're back to philosophy again. With God in the word of God. That there be just men. Jesus Christ was a just man. The Bible records Lot as a just man. Noah was a just man. Abraham was a just man. Upon whom it happens according to the works of the wicked. 
Now for Jesus, the works of the wicked was the cross. Why did he deserve the cross when he was just? Now see, that takes you one point further. If the men and women in Fox's Book of Mars were just, why did they get the rats, the, the faggots, the, uh, the, the cross, the, the being buried in a sack in a, in a river, the lions, the evil beasts of the Colosseum? Why did they get that if they were just? What Psalm is now saying from 13, 14, 15, why is it the wicked will get the best, but the just people get the worst? Again, there be wicked men. I'm trying to, my eyes are going blurry, so forgive me. There be wicked men. Barabbas. To whom it has happened according to the work of the righteous. Barabbas was set free. And he was a criminal. You know verse 14 just told you? He just spoke about Jesus Christ. The just man setting a wicked man free. Wow. I said that this also is vanity. Now he's not saying Christ's work on the cross is vanity, but Barabbas got to go home and Jesus got the cross. That's not right. You know, when, when the angel revealed to John about that mystery harlot, that she's going to profess to be a Christian and drink the blood of saints, and, and John's like... He, he is astonished. Why she keep on doing it and all the saints are dying? And a lot of the ones were in the Inquisition, the Spanish and all that, and those who killed Christians lived to be good old ages. Yet the young and fairly old were killed. You know what Solomon says? As far as life under the sun, that's vanity. And yet Christ will give them a martyr's crown. And to the wicked that done it, he'll give them the everlasting hell prepared for the angel, prepared for the devil and his angels. So don't worry about people going to the grave and not being judged and not being caught. God has caught them. God is long-suffering, not willing any should perish. Then I commended the mirth, because a man has no better thing under the sun, and this is hedonism, H-E-D-O-N-I-S-M, than to eat, to drink, and to be merry. Have you heard that before? See, it's come out of the Bible. Eight chapters and 15 verses, and look all that we studied. There's a lot of verses and a lot of words before we find eat, drink, and be merry. But see, you ran to one verse and you put it on a sampler, and now you like it. Psalm has been talking about the wickedness of the court system, the judgment. How people get away with what they shouldn't get away with. And the fact is, you just better just eat, drink, and be merry. And he's not saying be a law. Just try to do right. And you know what? Don't worry about the wicked people. Because if you fear God, you'll be okay. Now, if I fear God, okay... I'm going to eat. Because God has given me the food, and I'll thank God for blessing me the food. And all that God's given me. I'm going to drink. Now, if I fear God, I'm not going to take part in intoxicating liquors. 
My worst drink I drink is soda. Coffee, water, and juice. As a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, I have a, a conscience and a standard about alcohol. I don't want it. I don't want it, the Lord to catch me doing it. So, see, I don't need to worry about the drink. And Mary, I enjoy the Lord, and I have great pleasure serving the Lord. And even when I'm having a hard time, I'm serving the Lord and having a good time at it. And the drink has nothing to do with it. And I guarantee, as Solomon under the law, I guarantee he followed those same principles too. Well, he drank wine. New wine. Not old wine. New wine. Great juice. You see, you want to put... It did not say liquor for drink, but you take the word drink and you add your own word to it. You make your own dictionary. Drink could be water, could be juice, could be milk. And to be merry. For that sh shall abide with him all. Let me try this again, excuse me. For that shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life. Which God giveth him under the sun. Now that under the sun appears 27 times in this book. If you go about your job and your labor that God has given you. And it's all for God fearing God. God will give you eat. God will give you drink. And God will give you happiness. You don't need to seek outside resources outside of God violating the, the Bible. You can be happy doing what God wants you to do. You don't need the artificial additives and stuff like that. And by the way, their happiness from their drink is only temporal. I've had that experience. And waking up in the morning, throwing up in the toilet is not merrymaking. Not remembering the night I had the, before by drinking. It's not merrymaking. And the things I've done with it, eat, drink, and be merry under the Lord, I can remember. It doesn't make me sick, and it makes me happy. What about you? And by the way, it usually doesn't cost anything. How much does your case or your bottles cost? When I apply my heart, apply, to know wisdom and to see the business that is done under the earth, that's, that's the subject. Death and everything from, from birth to death. For also there is that neither day nor night seeth sleep with his eyes. Then I beheld all the work of God. Agnostic. I'm not sure there's a God. I don't really know. That a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. I beheld all the work of God. That a man cannot find out the work that is done. Man can't even comprehend. John says we can't even write all the books about Jesus Christ. You think that's all the people he healed? He went from north to south, from east to west Israel, healing and doing all kinds of miracles, the Bible says. And the Bible says when he did one miracle, he did others, in, 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 the, in the plural S. And you got to ask yourself, with all those people that are not even written in the Bible, where were they at his defense? There are tons and tons and tons and tons of more. 4,000 people he fed. 5,000 people he fed. Ten lepers. One turned back and gave him thanks. Because though a man labored to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. 
Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. In Matthew 7, 7. Some say they are seeking, but they're not so. You can't. You can never say you're done learning this Bible. Even eternally. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will, I guarantee we'll be ever having forever Bible study and still won't be able to comprehend all that God has done for everyone and for all God has to be. We, the Bible doesn't even talk about the eternity past. And then we got from time, the time that the, the first day all the way to the last day, Revelation 20. And we got all eternity future yet to be with the, the, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then all the Gentiles that got saved and going to come into and take the leaves and all that. The word of God is forever living and forever going. 